statistical scholars and welcome to a episode of fun times in statistics where we're going to be looking at uh, summarizing categorical data using Minitab. As you can see here I have Minitab 18 open and I have the smoking data that we're going to be looking at for practice this week. So this is your lesson on how to do everything in chapter 2. Now I've, uh, if you notice, I've scrolled down a little bit in my data set, so I'm at line 16 in my data. So there is some data above and there is some data below, but this isn't an incredibly huge data set, but it'll be big enough for what we need to do this week. Uh, I just wanted to give you a look at the full screen, but what I'm going to be doing this week, I actually have open in a Word document right here. So my directions are pretty much always going to look like this where I'll have what I'm going through in the Word document and then what I'm going to be doing will show up in Minitab and then I will copy and paste the parts I need to answer the questions into the Minitab document. So hopefully you can follow along on your own computer or if you want you can print this document and then follow along with me uh, on your own. So here we go. The first thing we're going to talk about how to do is how to summarize just one categorical variable. So we're only going to be looking at one in particular. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a frequency table and then a relative frequency table for level of education, which is C2 over here. Notice that when we look at our data in Minitab, it indicates to us what type of data we're looking at by the column name. So we've got the variable names down below and then the columns and they're indicated with numbers. And I'm hoping you notice that the numbers sorry, the columns that have numbers in them, it doesn't change anything in the label. But when it definitely has text and it's very sure it's going to be categorical, it puts a little T next to them. That's because Minitab is actually made by a British company and they usually use different words for some of the same things that we use. So we call these categorical. It's like, hey, this column has text in it, so we're going to label it with T. I would have preferred it would have labeled it C, but they kind of already use C when they were calling it a column, so I don't blame them. Anyway, so we're going to do C2. So let's take a look at creating a frequency table first. The way we do this is we go up to stat and then down to tables and over to tally individual variables. Most of what we do in this class can be found in the stat menu. There'll be a few other things. So what we want to do is we want to tell Minitab, hey, what variable would I like to get this table for or this tally for? So if you are following along and you don't have anything appearing in the white box to the left, that's because you need to click into the variable box first. Sometimes Minitab doesn't automatically do this. So if you have nothing appear, make sure you click into the variable box first to get it to tell you what your variables available are to do so. And in our case, we want to put in C2, education level. There are two ways to do so. You can double click to place it in there. Or if you want, you can click and highlight and then hit select. If you have multiple variables you want to put into a, uh, to, sorry, <laughs> analyze with mini tab, uh, you can also click and drag to select many at the same time. This is useful if you're doing a couple different at the same time. So frequency tables, as you saw in the notes, are just how frequent they are counts. So I only need to display the counts and I already have that box checked. I only want to have that one checked because I'm only doing a frequency table. So there's my counts. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there is my table appearing in the session window. So I want to be careful how I select this. So see how Minitab, as I scroll my mouse around, only selects per certain parts. I want the tally menu. And there are a couple different ways you can do this to place it into your Word document to answer this question. Actually, I'm going to hit enter a few times to get some space in here. Um, <clears throat> you can actually hit this little drop down arrow and have the option to copy it as a picture. That works really well if you're worried about how Word might format it when it places it into your document. So there we go, that's it as a picture. Um, if you don't like that, you can always uh, choose the option to just copy it in general and then paste it into your document. I like the picture option because it doesn't screw up any of the formatting that Minitab automatically used. The one thing that you might want to notice about Minitab that's different from making these by hand is that it doesn't call your total column total, it calls it N. So just so you know, there's a little N that just stands for your total or number in your sample or number in your data, which is where the N comes from. Cool. So that's how you make a frequency table. Now let's make a relative frequency or frequency relative to our total, which in this case is N40. So we're going to go back to stat, down to tables, and over to tally individual variables. 
I already have my level of education variable in there, so I'm good to go for that. But now I want to make it calculated as a percent because I want to do relative frequency. So I'm going to uncheck the counts box because I'm not doing frequency. And I'm going to check the percents box. Selecting percents is going to make it do relative frequency. If you would like to check a different percent, uh, don't worry about that for now. We're going to do that later. Um, <laughs> after you've hit that box and made it so that it checks the percent box, we are good to go. And you can go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so notice it tallied it for us. It's kind of hard to see because I've got my windows side by side, but if you roll up, there's my previous tally. It came up so fast you didn't even notice it. It looks like it was just the same stuff. But notice it says the word percent here and our values are different, representing a percentage. And notice when you do the tally um, for relative frequency, it doesn't include the total column anymore because it's 100%. Fun facts. Alright, so this time I'm going to copy and paste it differently just to show you the difference between choosing the um, image option. So if you just, you know, do like the whole paste with your keyboard thing, that works pretty well and it makes it a nice little table. Um, if you're not careful with how you paste, it can come out kind of wonky. It's one of the reasons why I like the image option. But uh, this is pretty nice too because then you can use like some of your fancy word design layouts for tables to mess with this and make it look big, better. Um, and if you want, you can remove that tally header. Excuse me, to make this a little bit easier to read. All right, let's scroll down a bit. Woohoo! Next, we're going to make some graphical summary. So now we're going to create a bar chart for the level of education. So I'm just going to do a frequency bar chart this time and not worry about doing relative frequency. And then it'll be easier for me to answer these questions. All right, so to do graphs, we're going to go up to the graph button. And then down here below, you'll notice both of our charts are together. And there's our bar chart. Woohoo! Now here's where you have to be careful. We are actually doing a simple bar chart where we're doing counts of unique values. We will look at doing clustered and stacks later on, but this is what we want for now. Let's go ahead and hit OK. All right, and the variable I want to look at is still level of education. So again, click into the categorical variables box and then everything will appear on the left and you will click level of education to place it in there. If you want, you can now mess with some of the options in here. I always check out the labels option. I'm a little picky about my labels. I like everything labeled because uh, it makes everything easier to read. If you want to give this chart a different title, you totally can. Minitab will automatically produce a title for you. You can always change this later as well. I'm going to click on the data labels option. And I'm going to select use Y labels. And I'll tell you what that does in a minute. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and then OK again. Come on, there she goes. All right, so by clicking that Use Y Labels button, what I made it do is I made it produce these numbers on top of your boxes. I don't know if you've ever read a graph and been like, oh man, I don't know if this is, so like say you're looking at PhD, I don't know if this is like lining up as you kind of scroll over with like a four or a two, or is it in between, is it three, is it three and a half? Well, you can't have half a person, so that's probably not true. Um, <laughs> so these little labels on top I like because it makes it very clear, hey, this is nine, it's not at 10, you you know, depending on if you drift up or drift down and think it's like an eight. It makes it just easier to read uh, in general. And notice Minitab has labeled everything for us, chart of level of education, the levels of education, the categories within our categorical variable, um, and then it's labeled this as the counts. It labels these very well. I like it a lot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. The easiest way to do that is to right click on your mouse. And the option to copy your graph will come up. And then you can paste it into your Word document. Woohoo! So there it is. And I'm going to make mine just a little bit smaller so I can fit it on the same page is A and B. I'm not going to be able to do that. All right, you're going to have to look over here. <laughs> fun times. Hey, I said it was fun times. So using your results, how many females in this study have a master's degree for their highest level of education? Well, there are nine, which is nice because it labeled it for us. Nine females with master's degrees. Alrighty. So what's the one that occurs the least often? This is one of the things that's very easy to tell in a bar chart. You can use them to compare things very quickly, aka if I'm looking for the least, I look for the shortest dude, and that's PhDs. So this is me cheating a little to get my formatting down below. <clears throat> the 
least often occurring value is PhD. Oops. Which there are only I reared that weird. Eh, you can fix it later. Three. Done. Cool. So now that we've had a bar chart, that's one way to summarize things visually using Minitab. Uh, now we're going to make a pie chart, which is the other really popular visual one. Um, I've also included some extra directions for the pie chart. I think pie charts on their own are not so clear as to what's happening. Um, in fact, I'll just go ahead and make a standard one real first. So I'm, what I'm saying is I'm going to make the pie chart, but I'm not going to do this whole add category name percent draw line thing the first time, just to show you how Okay, in my opinion, useless a standard pie chart is. <laughs> so we're going to go to uh, graph and then pie chart, which is just below bar chart. We're going to throw a level of education in there. And I'm not going to do anything with the settings at this point because I want to show you what this looks like and how it doesn't exactly give you the best pie chart in the world. So go ahead and hit OK. And then there's your pie chart. And then I'm hoping you're looking at this and you're like, OK, Blue, that's bachelor's. Key is helpful. Um, but it's like, how big is blue? I mean, what percent is this? This is so useless. I mean, it looks like it's slightly less than half, and this kind of looks like it's about a third, and that might be a third, and then who? I mean, just, I, I can't tell. It's useless. It's horrible. The standard pie chart of Minitab is not that great. And this is also something that I have a big nitpick thing about pie charts for. They're not very informative as they stand in their standard version. As long as you write more information on them, they're informative, which is not that great as far as, like, summarizing information goes. If, uh, you know, I wanted a complete picture, I'm better off just doing a table. So one of the nice things about Minitab, if you get super frustrated with this, is that if you leave your mouse, like just hanging out over a part of the pie, it will tell you what's there. <laughs> so like, hey, this is bachelor's and it's 42.5%. So like I said, it's slightly smaller than half. Is this close to a third? Am I close? Oh, I'm not close. Darn it. <sighs> My visual st skills are, you know, seriously lacking evidently. Um, I guess that does look more closer to a quarter than a third. Okay. Anyway, so let's improve on this because it looks terrible. So I'm going to minimize this guy and I'm going to make a better version. One that has category names, percents, and a line draw from the slice so that you can actually tell what's going on. So we're going to go back to graph, back to pie chart, and then it's got my default settings from what I've already put in. And let's go ahead and click the labels option. Tab over to slice labels. And now we're going to click like all these boxes. So we want category name, <clears throat> sorry, percent, and I'm going to select draw a line from tab, sorry, label to slice. So I'll, sh I'll bring up what all these do when you see the image because me just clicking the boxes and reading them to you is probably not going to help. Name for you, sorry, percent, and then um, draw a line to label slice. Go ahead and hit OK, then OK again. It's going to produce a much better graph for you. So I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so it's easier for you all to see. All right, so notice it's like labeled our slices really well. Hey, this is bachelor's and there's the percent that goes with it. High school, master's, PhD. Now I've asked, asked it to add this line in here because it might be the fact that if you have a lot of these groups that some of these aren't positioned all that well and they're hard to read. So like high school, it's kind of hard to read. So I'm going to move it over just a little bit. I think that improves upon it. Or if there was one you were writing information about and you particularly wanted to emphasize or talk about, maybe pull it out and be like, hey, there's bachelors. Look, it's the max. It's the biggest one. Um, so that you could maybe emphasize it a bit more in whatever you happen to be writing about. So I'm going to go ahead and, as we did before, in the gray space, right click and then copy our graph and paste it into our document. And there we are. Cool. So using my results, what percent of these females have no college education, aka their highest level of education is high school? Words. Where's my thing to make it bigger? There it is. All right, so where's my high school percent? Oh, 27.5%. <clears throat> see, about 27 point, sorry, 5%. Oof. Typing, not a good skill tonight. Of these females have no college education. So there's where we're at. 
All right. Much easier once your gra once your graph or chart is labeled well and uh, detailed. It's good things. All right. Let's look at how to summarize two categorical variables. So this is a little bit different. Um, in Minitab, these are going to be called two-way tables. They're also called contingency tables. There's also a third name for them, but, you know, we're going to ignore that for now. Um, we're going to make a two-way table, first of all. Unsurprisingly, this is found in the tables menu. <laughs> so we're going to go back to stat, down to tables, and then to... I'm sorry, I'm going to cough. Hold on. Sorry about that. I had a brief pause so I could have a coughing fit and you guys not hear it. So we're back to <laughs> stats, tables, and then... We are going down to a cross tabulation, which is another way for the contingent, another name for the two way or contingency table. All right, so we have raw categorical variables. And that's going to ask you, where do you want your rows and where do you want your columns? So notice on here, I want smoking status to be my row variable. So I'm going to throw that into my row. And then for my column variable, I want level of education. So this is going to be a nice little comparison for us. We're going to see, ooh, does education seem to have some sort of impact on smoking status or not in a nice summarized way. Cool. Um, for now, I'm going to leave the display option to just counts. We definitely can change this later into having different percentages. So if you've read through your notes, you know that I can create a row, column, and total percents. And you can use them to do things like marginal or conditional distributions. I think... Let's see, um, besides count, I think I'm going to also click total percents because I'm looking ahead at my questions where it's asking, asking you to find some percentages, but eh, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's undo that. Let's just leave it as is for now. If you want, you can check all these boxes. That way you have all the percentages in front of you for whenever you need them. Let's go ahead and click some OKs. P.S. If you select all these boxes, it gets kind of messy, so we're just going to hit OK. Bam. There's where we're at. Let's go ahead and copy this. I think I'm going to copy it regular. Do, do, do. This is not going to fit, and I know it. Nope. <laughs> it looks terrible. Let's hit enter a couple times and put this on a new page. There we go. Ah, okay. So <laughs> there's where we're at. Um, I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I don't really need to know this cell contents. Yada, yada, yada. Notice that when it comes to the two-way table, it's changed its mind on how it wants to represent the word total. And rather than using n this time, it's going to use the word all. Like if I used all my groups, fall that part out. All right. So let's use this to answer some questions. Of the females who smoke, what percent have a bachelor's degree? So looking at only those who smoke. So out of all the smokers, that's people who said yes to smoking. So out of all these people, which there are nine of, what percent have bachelor's degrees? So who has a bachelor's degree out of those groups? Two. So that would be two out of nine or, oh man, that formatting looks terrible. Um, let me make that blue real quick. So that's the color I've been using, right? Two out of nine, which, you know, if you make that a decimal, it's a bunch of twos. That's one of the things unique about dividing by nine, just produces the same number as a decimal repeating. Um, or since I wanted to do this as percent, Oh man, so I actually didn't need that. To get my answer, I'm just doing 22.22%. I'm gonna do two decimal places. Oh, round to the nearest tenth. I'm a liar. I'm gonna do two percent. I've been doing this for too long. I'm starting to get weird. Okay, cool. So, now let's look at those who don't smoke. Yeah, number that, that's just what I want you to do. So, not smokers. So that's these guys, the 31. So out of only those who don't smoke, what percent have a master's degree? So don't smoke, so no's and master's. That's eight people. Let's see what that would be. Okay, so division, totally my strong suit. That one I definitely can't do in my head, so I'm pulling out my calculator. Dividing by nine is trickery, but this one is definitely not trickery. I'm going to list more decimal places that I'm going to need so that I can round effectively here. So when I round that, since I'm only rounding the nearest tenth, which is super common with percentages, don't ask me why, started with um, weird math things, eight. Cool, so about 25.8% don't smoke who have master's degrees. Seems kind of low. Oh, it's don't smoke and have a master's degree. Okay. All right. Of all the females, what percent of high school level educators, I'm sorry, out of all of them, oh, so I'm looking at everybody, so all 40 ladies, 
Uh, what percent have high school level education and are smokers? So I need to look at the high school educator, education level people, and are smokers. So if they are smokers, they said yes. So that's only six people out of everybody, so out of 40. So I'm going to cheat again. You know what? Oh no! What did I just do? Oh boy. Man, I've got too many errors for me to... Seriously, it doesn't want me to like type here. So I have to go down further. So like I just said, <laughs> it's 6 out of 40. That went so well, it's not even funny. Just so well. Can I do that in my head quickly? Uh, it's like 0 0.15. Okay. 0 0.15. Division. Something I do in my head far too often rather than relying on technology to do it quickly. What's wrong with me? Don't ask. I like maths. It's, it's an issue. 15%! Woohoo! It's kind of surprising. I was expecting it to be a little higher. Okay. <clears throat> so then you ask yourself, hey, out of all the ladies that I have in this survey, because these are all females, by the way, in case you didn't notice that. I should have said that earlier. <coughs> hey, out of all of them, what percent smoke? So out of all of them, so out of all 40, what percent said yes to the smoking idea? Nine. Nine out of 40. Dividing into nine isn't as clean as dividing by nine, unfortunately. This is going to be something... Close to 2.2. Oh, screw it, I'm cheating using the calculator. 0.225. Doesn't look so good. But that's okay. At least it came out <laughs> as a nice little number. That looks hilarious. Sorry about that. <laughs> so that's 22.5%. That's kind of high. Huh, and none of these match. I find that interesting. Okay, so what I find really interesting about this is when I compare the number of females that smoke to um, the number of people, so the number uh, that do smoke and are high school educated, these appear to be unrelated. Yeah. Okay. Because I was expecting similarities if education level had no impact. But they look pretty different. Okay. All right. Let's create some bar charts. So, I use the name Relative Frequency Bar Chart for this. This has so many names, it's not even funny. <sighs> so, <clears throat> um, I do believe your textbooks calls them all stacked bar charts, which is hilarious to me because they're not all stacked bar charts. Or um, segmented bar charts, that's another name that you'll see. Um, but we're going to create these. So what we're, our goal is going to be is for our bar chart, we want to have our level of education separated into, you know, bars based on whether or not they smoke. So let's see how to do that. So we're going to go to graph, bar chart, and we're going to create a stacked one. I'm going to show you how to do a clustered one too for fun. They look about the same. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. All right. So... <clears throat> There's some weirdness in how you do this. So I want to put in level of education first and then smoking status second. Now, the reason I want to put smoking status second is because of this. Stack categories of last categorical variable. So I want to stack them so that smoking status is the one that's stacking. This seems a bit weird. If you're having a hard time with this, think of it as the last variable I put in is going to be the one that splits apart my stacks. Go ahead and hit OK. So there we go. Okay. Um, so that's what a stack looks like. Let's make a cluster because I'm going to do this so that, you know, I've got one bar showing the percent of males, I'm sorry, percent that smoke, percent that don't smoke by education. So um, that's a stack should you ever see one, just in case. Now let's do the other type, the type I'm actually asking for here. So bar chart. I want to create a cluster, so notice this matches what we're wanting to do here. I want to have my bars separate, and each bar show the percent that smoke and don't smoke. All right, now we're going to hit OK. And again, this is very important. Outermost is going to be how you stack, so level of education, oops. <laughs> level of education first! <laughs> Smoking status second, so that's how we're going to create our bar, our stacks. Um, <clears throat> And then the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some different options on my chart. So notice in here it says I want to do relative frequency. Right now, if I just hit OK, it would produce counts for me, like because that's the default. But I want to make this do percentage. So you got to hit chart options here. And tell it that you want to show Y as a percentage. 
and I'm going to do it across all categories instead of within the levels of <clears throat> levels within the category. So what does that mean? I'm presenting across the total, not within the category itself. But that's not what I want to do. So since I want to answer these questions of, hey, given that they're in high school or whatever and whatnot, hey, I want that. Woo. Okay, so a couple things to notice since I had this not doing it by total, I'm doing percent calculated within the levels of education. Um, the, all of these are going to add up to 100%. Because I'm going, oh my god, that's so tiny. Oh, that's because it's zero. Ha! <laughs> All right. Let's copy this chart over. This chart is hard to read. Paste. So as you look at this, I'm going to scroll over a little bit. I'm calculating percentages within the groups, not in total. Um, <clears throat> let me delete some of that. What this is doing, here we go is it's saying looking only at those who have a bachelor's degree we'll find the percent that say no percent that say yes only at a bachelor's so i'm grouping according to education level and that's how i'm doing my percent which is why when they ask you hey what percent of females that smoke given that they're only in high school so if i'm only looking at the high school level education people which percent smoke so high school yeses looks to be oh i should have made it do the total dang it let's go float over here float word Ooh, 54.5455. But in keeping with our tradition of let's make sure I only use one decimal place because we should follow directions. 54. Point, now I'm going to round 5. Is that correct? I always hate it when I second guess myself because I forget the number. 54.5, so I don't round up then. Percent. <clears throat> What percent of the females don't smoke, given that they have a bachelor's degree? So in considering only those who have a bachelor's degree, so only this group, how many people said they don't? So they said no, <laughs> said they don't. Ah, nose. Come on. Lodi. Oh, it doesn't know I'm over here. Sorry, I had to click. Ah, 88.2%. I actually don't like this graph that much. It's useful for the questions I want to ask and answer, but that's about all it's useful for. Um, so if I'm lo just looking within those groups alone, what would the percent be? So if I already knew that the woman I was looking at was high school educated, how likely is it that she smoked? If I was already looking at somebody who's bachelor has a bachelor's degree, how likely is it that they don't smoke? That's what these are looking at. It's knowing some information, Do am I able to predict their smoking behavior? And it's interesting because clearly these groups are different. <laughs> I mean, looking at the side-by-sides, it's a little bit clearer from looking at the, than looking at the stack that, yeah, like high school looks totally different from bachelor's, master's, and PhD um, because those levels of education clearly have a much bigger no group than a yes group, and then high school has a bigger yes group. So I suspect that a level of education does have some impact, or in particular, just the high school or lower education level appears to be the one that um, has different behavior from the rest of these. If you would like to be able to test that for sure, take stats too, because that's where you learn how to do that test. Woohoo! Um, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this and that you got something from it. Good luck making your side by side and your stacked, stacked, oh my god, that's such a hard word to say, bar charts, and I'll see you next time.